So Origin and Corsair were like, hey, you want to do this video with us? I was like, oh yeah, sure, okay. Basically the video is setting up a mobile workstation slash battle station for students. You're in school, you're a student, you're getting an education, then you probably need a computer of some sort. You could just get a desktop, but for schooling, if you're gonna go to class, you probably want something a bit more portable. Something you can throw in a backpack, set up and take down really easily. But wait, Kyle, school's not even in session for a lot of people. Physical classes have been canceled due to COVID-19. Everything's online now. That's true. But this video is still relevant because what happens when class reopens? What, are you gonna bring a big old desktop to class? Actually, if that's you, if you bring a full-blown desktop and monitor to class, that is a power move and your life should be celebrated. But for the rest of us who are a little more practical and our logical minds get in the way of things, a laptop is probably the way to go. But not just any laptop, no. This is the Evo 17S from Origin. Well, this is a wooden box, but inside is the Evo 17S from Origin. And I mean, I, there's something to be said about boxes that require a crate or a power drill to open. It, it just it just gets me in the mood. So this is a one and done solution, right? This is the whole enchilada. You, you put this in the backpack, you head to class, done deal. But once you get home, you wanna spice things up a bit when you're ready to game, don't you? you don't Want to be gaming, you don't want to be playing CS going to trackpad. So we've got a couple other accessories and other peripherals here from Corsair and Elgato to help us out when we're at home. The Corsair K95 RGB Platinum XT. This is Corsair's flagship mechanical keyboard. This one in particular comes with Cherry MX Blue switches. Personally, I'm actually really glad they sent us one of these because we recently lost one of our K95s. I don't know how you lose a massive mechanical keyboard, but we did, and we only had five of them at that point. Let me tell you, life was hard. Those are those are dark times. But now we have six again, so that's great. For a mouse, we have Corsair's Dark Core RGB Pro SE. Fantastic, beautiful mouse, super comfortable, great shape. It's actually one of the few mice that that's made it onto the wall of fame right there in the middle. Oh yeah. That's how you know it's good. If it's on the wall of fame, it's good. We don't put crap on this wall, all right? Only good shit on that wall. Virtuoso RGB Wireless AC headset. Uh, yeah, I've actually never used this before, so uh, we'll see how it is. It's very shiny. It's a very shiny headset. It looks pretty snazzy. It looks pretty snazzy right there. Okay, so we'll check that out and see how that goes. We've got a gaming mouse pad, you know, that makes you 10 times better of gamer, MM300. I think this is an extended one. Yes, it is measuring 930 by 300 millimeters. And then we've got some Elgato products to help us become full-time professional streamers. Because let's face it, mom and dad, while you suckers are paying 50 grand a year for me to go to med school so I can become a heart surgeon, I could probably make more money playing Fortnite. I know, the truth hurts. But we do have a nice ensemble of streaming hardware here. The Wave 3, which is a fairly new product from Elgato, has gotten really high marks, actually. I, this is my first time working with it. It's got some nice features, zero latency monitoring, anti-clipping technology. That's actually really useful so you don't deafen your entire chat when you scream after winning your first Battle Royale. It also supports high resolution audio up to 24 bit, 96 kilohertz. Very excited to check that out. Camlink 4K. Obviously with a laptop, you can't really use an internal capture card. So here we have have a USB type A capture device that does 4K. I've actually never used this product before either. I do have an Elgato 4K60 Pro inside of the streaming PC over there, um, which has uh, been a fantastic product. So if this comes anywhere close to that in terms of performance and quality, then we are in very good shape. And lastly, we got a couple key lights. Lighting is very important. Talk to any cinematographer or DP. They will tell you that lighting is everything and can make or break a shot in movies and film and TV. The same goes for your stupid face. Believe it or not, your chat wants to see you in full clarity, unless you're really ugly. Links, 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 links to all this stuff can be found in the description below. Now let's put it all together. It's all good. We, we got it set up and uh, it's looking it's looking pretty legit. There's a lot going on here, a lot of functionality. It's a pretty killer setup, to be honest, but uh, there are a couple things to note. For starters, you might have noticed that I am using a large and cumbersome C-stand for my Elgato key light. I'm not using the actual stock stand that comes included with it because the C-clamp doesn't actually fit behind my wall-mounted desks. Uh, so I, I couldn't really use it. Fortunately, most people don't have wall-mounted desks like I do, so it shouldn't be a problem for them, but I, I got a C-stand, so that's what I'm using. 
Also, I had to elevate the, uh, well, I wanted to elevate the laptop just a bit to give me a bit better ergonomics. So I'm looking more eye level and not looking down at the panel. So I, I actually just put it on my little plastic toolbox that I keep my power drill in and uh, it's, it's, it's working out pretty good. It's it, probably not the best permanent solution, but for the sake of the video, it works just fine. Also, there's a lot of connected devices here and only three USB type A ports on the laptop. So fortunately I had a USB hub that I was able to connect to, which gave us two additional USB ports, but that still was one short of how many we needed. Fortunately, the Dark Core SE uh, has the option to either go 2.4 gigahertz wireless or Bluetooth. And obviously Bluetooth doesn't require uh, a USB port or an adapter if you've got it built in. So we're using Bluetooth right now, which is kind of a bummer. I wanted to use 2.4 gigahertz because that's the lower latency option of the two, but at least we get everything connected this way. It still feels really responsive. Also, I added my own personal stream deck to the mix because it works perfectly for this environment and what we're trying to do. It's uh, kind of one of those must have items if you're serious about streaming. The keyboard's great. I use a K95 at home, so it's nothing new to me, but there's a reason why I use it. There's a reason why I have five of them um, because they're, they're damn good keyboards. The headset, the Virtuoso headset, my first time wearing it, very comfortable as well, and it feels very solid. I love the, uh, the ear cups, how they're hinged onto the, uh, the headband. Very sturdy, it's like all metal and solid. If you shake it, you know, you know how like some headsets, you just shake them and then you see the, you see the, uh, the ear cups just kind of ragdoll, just like flopping around. These ones have like some resistance to them. Memory foam ear cups, very comfortable, nice faux leather uh, headband. Pretty sure this is faux leather. The microphone, I have not used and I'm not gonna use it. I'm actually recording the audio that you're hearing right now with the Wave 3 microphone from Elgato. And uh, I tested it earlier, it sounds pretty darn good. I actually elevated it, I've got it standing on top of a, a Ryzen 9 retail box right now, just to get it a little bit closer to my mouth for, for better clarity. And it, uh, it's, it sounded really good. I really like this thing, I like how just intuitive it is. It's simple, simple and clean, nice capacitive mute button at the top, very easy to use. If you don't wanna use the included stand, you can just unscrew it and add your own boom pole or whatever. I, I'm using my phone right now. I kind of propped it up against the laptop. That's my chat. That's uh, how I'm gonna be viewing um, Twitch chat because I am gonna stream. I'm gonna stream for realsies in this video, okay? You won't be able to join because by the time you see this, the stream will be over, obviously. But um, that's gonna be, this is gonna be my, my chat window, all right? Oh yeah, the video that you're watching right now is uh, Lumix GH4 from Panasonic. It's kind of my uh, glorified webcam for today. And it is being connected to the laptop via the cam link, uh, the 4K cam link from Elgato. And it's, it's looking and working pretty good. We're only recording and streaming at 1080p 60 FPS, but knowing that we can go to 4K if we want to is a nice option to have. The laptop itself is looking pretty solid. The screen is a 17.3 inch. I don't know the resolution yet. Uh, in fact, I don't really know much of anything about this laptop because there's multiple ways you can configure it. You can tailor it to your own needs and budget, of course. So I'm not exactly sure what kit Origin sent me. I don't know if this is like a, the maxed out high-end version. We'll go into that in just a moment. But as far as the outside of the laptop, it looks really clean, kind of a minimalistic approach in the design. The The keyboard is actually really nice. For chiclet style keys, they have some decent travel distance. They're very snappy, very tactile. Um, they're not clicky at all, which I actually prefer, and uh, very nice RGB backlighting on them. If I didn't have the K95 right now, I would have zero problems gaming or typing on the keyboard uh, that the laptop has. The trackpad is super smooth, very fluid. It doesn't depress. Instead, you've got two buttons just beneath it, two physical buttons for your right and left mouse click, and those feel good as well. So there's an overview of the setup. There's a lot going on here, like I said, uh, but it's looking really promising so far. Of course, we got to test it out for realsies. But first, before we do any of that, let's take a closer look at this Evo 17S, all right? Because I have, again, I have no idea what the specs are apart from 17.3 inch screen. And it's IPS, I know it's IPS as well. But um, just, just from moving the mouse around, this is super fluid. This is 120 or 144 hertz at least. So let's let's take a look at that first. 240 hertz, holy Toledo. Okay, no wonder I'm just cutting through the screen with my mouse cursor. It feels really fluid, guys. And 1920 by 1080, that's a good pairing, right? Because that's an easier amount of pixels to drive than 4K or even 1440p. So at 240 hertz, if you really wanna utilize that refresh rate, then 1080p is kind of where you want to be at, even if we do have a beefy GPU in here. Speaking of, drum roll please. Uh, okay, they gave us an RTX 2080 Super. Yeah, it is a Max Q. Yeah, I think they I think they kitted us out 
pretty good, guys. The processor is an Intel Core i7-10875H. Wow, that's just a really long CPU SKU, Intel. 2.3 gigahertz, that's the base frequency, and 16 gigs. So 16 gigs of DDR4 memory. I think you can go up to 32 gigs DDR4 um, if you wanted to configure it to that, but pretty decent. I would say this is definitely on the high end in terms of how you can configure the Evo 17S. But uh, let's jump and do a game. All right, we're gonna kick it off with some CSGO. I feel like this is a pretty good title to showcase running on this laptop because it's a fast paced shooter, a competitive esports title that really benefits from having a higher refresh rate display. Probably also goes without saying that uh, this laptop can do video conferencing. It's more than equipped to handle all of your Zoom meetings. Someone's 420 blazing it up in here. Guys, not at, not at work, okay? Have some respect. Gotcha. Gotcha. No! Oh, get me! All right, so far, this setup can clearly game without issue. Let's try a different title. Kojima Production. Desimo. The Stranding. Continue. Afterburner. Let's play some Death Stranding. This is my first time playing it. I, I played like the first five minutes, which was basically just me watching cinematics. Let's take a look at our settings. Sure, you're all curious. So 1920 by 1080, V-Sync's off. And looks like we're at very high, pretty much maxed out settings here. We do have NVIDIA DLSS set to performance. We could go quality. I'm gonna do performance. All right, so right off the bat, looks like we're getting anywhere between 70 and 80 FPS. And visuals look great. This game looks fantastic on PC. Oh, even when Norman Reedus eats shit, he looks good while doing it. Could wait out the red over there. Could skip the cinematic over there. Yes, thank you for letting me skip that. Skip, skip, skip. Let me play the game, thank you. All right, let's go over there. Ow, am I like a delivery man or a newborn? Because it seems like I can't walk. Jump, 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 climb, Norman. Climb! Man, this game looks good. It looks good and it's performing well. Paddle, Norman. Paddle! He is a toddler. This is just like Toddler Simulator. Meh, goo goo gaga. I'm in the water. I don't want to take a bath. I'm only five minutes in. It's already the weirdest game I've ever played. This game is pretty. It is pretty. I like the music too. I'm digging the vibe, yo. Now I've seen some gameplay footage and it all looks the same. All the gameplay that I've seen so far, it just looks like this. It's Norman Reedus in the middle of nowhere, which is beautiful, but I haven't seen a whole lot of diversity. So I'm not sure how much our frame rate's really gonna change with, uh, with this little demo here. Oh, damn, it's a damn. Ooh, smart drugs. See, drugs make you smart. Told you, mom. All right, can we skip this? I don't care if anything cool happened. Can we skip this too? So much thought and time and energy went into these cutscenes, and I just want to skip them all. Kojima, you're obsessed with the story and the narrative, which I admire, but it's a video game. Let me play. Why don't you just quit the gaming industry and make a movie? Oh my God, what's what's the point of skipping a cutscene if it's just gonna jump to another cutscene? This is not interesting. They're all 60, It's locked. all the cinematics are locked at 60 FPS. There's really nothing to show. Another cutscene. All right, I'm bailing. Sorry, Kojima, this is, this is just too much. But uh, from what we saw, this laptop runs Death Stranding perfectly fine at a smooth and saline 70 to 80 FPS, not too shabby. And now for our final test, an actual stream. I'm gonna actually stream to my Twitch account, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, we are now streaming. Hey, everybody. Hey, empty chat room. I don't have a lot of people that follow me on Twitch, so not expecting a huge audience, but maybe a few folks will trickle in. By the way, it's worth noting that I'm actually processing the stream right now with NVIDIA's NB Ink or NB Encoder, which is a dedicated part of the RTX GPU that's used specifically for video encoding. So this encoder has actually quickly become a go-to for streamers because it produces great image quality that's more or less equal to if you were using a CPU at x264 medium settings. It's also just really efficient. It basically delivers the same image quality using up to 15% less bitrate than last gen Pascal GPUs when streaming in H.264. The other nice benefit of NV Inc. is that since it uses fewer system resources and takes pretty much all the load off the CPU when it comes to streaming, CPU intensive titles can actually see some serious FPS gains. I really like NV Inc. I've been using it personally for a while now, and it's definitely cool to see it on board the laptop. Let's just start playing. Let me make sure that I'm actually streaming. Oh, hey, cool. People are popping up in chat. Yo, 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 yo. Actually, you guys, uh, you guys will be the perfect, perfect way to benchmark this. How do I sound and look? Apart from glamorous, as always. Uh, I'm talking about the stream quality, guys. My eyes are up here, okay? Stream looks good. Sound is good, too. Sounds good, pretty crispy. All right, sweet. Hey, you. 
No. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. It's fine. I'll just carry the team at four health. No big deal, bros. Ah! Sorry, headphone users. So right now, in case you guys are curious, I'm streaming at 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second, with a bit rate of 65, 6,500 kilobits. Kilobits per second. Oh, so smoky. Oh, did I kill you? I'm sorry. Oh, shoot. Hello. Am I dead? Did I go to heaven? Oh, that was just a flashbang. Ah! <laughs> so, guys, if you want to uh, maybe help me with my video here, give me a rating, one through 10. How's the stream quality look? How does it sound? Wow, actually, a lot of a lot of nines and tens. A couple 8.5s, but overall, I think the consensus is pretty positive. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this really random and super quick stream. You've been very helpful, actually, in helping me determine the quality of the stream itself, which seems to have been really good. So thank you guys for all the feedback. So there you go, guys. There's the whole setup in action. We've seen it game. We've seen it stream. We've seen it... Those are pretty much the only two things we did. But those are very intensive tasks, and it performed both of them with flying colors, which means that it can definitely handle anything less intensive than that, like schoolwork or word processing or any of that stuff that's less exciting. So uh, a nice work and play setup, if I do say so myself. And when you're ready to go to class, just unplug a couple things, pop the laptop in a bag and you're good to go. So thanks again to Corsair and Origin for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching so much. Toss a like if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech content on the way coming very soon. Have a good one guys. I will see y'all in the next video.